at the heart of every poem lies the confection to save souls. Daughters of St. Paul 100 Years of Foundation The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Today, the Pope chose this year as a year of mercy and compassion, while the Catholic Bishops of the Philippines, CBCP, chose this year as a year of the family, and the Eucharist as part of the program and the preparation for the celebration of the 500 years of faith in the Philippines. Mga igsuon ko diha kang Kristo, maayong buntag ka natong tanan. Unsa may sugyot sa Amoris Letizia, sulat pastoral sa atong Santo Papa Francisco, alang sa katauhan sa Dios. Ilabi na alang sa mga pamilya o minyo. Sugda na to kini pinaagi sa pagpadayag sa mga sugyot niya. Mahitungod kung unsaon pagtabang sa mga minyo. Iyang gisumada kini diya sa sulat ni San Pablo, may tungod sa gugma. Matod pa diha sa unang sulat ni San Pablo sa taga-Korinto. Kapitulo 13, versikulo 4, antod 7, nagkanayon ang gugma, mapailubon o maluluyon. Dili kini masinahon o tigpang hambo. Ang gugma dili mapahitas on o bastos. Ang gugma dili mamugos sa kaugalingong kagustuhan. Ang gugma dili masuk anon o madinuntan. Ang gugma dili malipay sa dautan, bundili sa kamatuuran. Ang gugma mo pailo, muto o mulahutay gayon. Sa sunod domingo ato kining o sa usahon mga iksuon, aron masabtan ato ang anong makatabang kini sa mga pamilya, labaw sa tanan, sa mga minyo. May buntag sa mga kausapa, may God bless us all. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago, Stu and Nancy Santiago, APM Ad and Promo Management, Alex P. Montañez and Family, Ernie and Mercy Evangelista, St. John Paul II, College of Davao, Fel Yamido and Family, Royal Red House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrilia, Tielino Trucking Services, iCrafter Optical Incorporated, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Pratas Shota Kandong, Shoydan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Consolidated Plywood Industry Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Porita Lorenzo and Family, Attorney and Mrs. Ellie Britannia and family, Ampi Ecasas and family, Dava Bote Junk Shop, Director Clara Aurelio and family, Dove Sales Incorporated, and Tess Valenzuela. Offering of the Holy Mass, accept most holy trinity. This sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the divine word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the Church, for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring groups. Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Region 11, headed by the Regional Director, Attorney Felix Alizel, 
and Assistant Regional Director for Technical Services, Marcia Isid. Davao Medical Society, headed by the President, Dr. Jennifer Banluta. Thanksgiving intentions of Genesia C. Pascua and family, Victor Billones, Dr. Carlos Tan and family, and Chings Lutung Bahay. Success of National Coastal Cleanup Day, spearheaded by the Environmental Management Bureau, Region 11. <clears throat> Birthday intentions of Eugene Aquino, Rina Fematignao, Dessa Rose Bea Lugarta, and Riz Margaret Raagas Ramos. Safe travel and good health of Wilton Peter Diaz and family. Good health and harmonious family relations. Teresita R. Villabrilie, Reynaldo and Gloria Maria Coronel, Jose Reynaldo and Ana Victoria Coronel, Christian Lorenzo and Rose Fatima Grace Coronel, Casrica Gloria Maria D. Coronel, Freddy and Grace Ramirez, and Emil Nathaniel L. Ramirez. Recovery and healing of Jeremy Chu, Rudolfo Estera, Emil Season, Manuel Sem, Dr. Alvin Garduque, Ernie Evangelista, and Ching Evangelista. For the eternal repose of Kashana, Felicidad, Florderica, Carlos, Adela, Jose Lim, Felicitas, Emmanuel Sr., Jose, Quirino, Silvestra, Isidorico, Luciana, Milagros, Elpidio, Sister Athens Angeles FSP, Saturnina, Ramon Sr., Ibero, and all benefactors of the Pauline's RTV programs. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people. Deliver them in their sicknesses and restore them good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We may unwittingly be serving both God and mammon, which according to Jesus is not possible. Mammon refers to huge amounts of wealth and big quantities of properties. Sometimes we tend to justify that we need wealth to serve God and his people, as some charismatic preachers do. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to be authentic disciples. We best understand the saying in the context of discipleship, journey and mission. If we believe that we can serve God and mammon, let us think again. Let us not fool ourselves. Better focus on serving God alone. The presider of this Eucharistic celebration is Father Rene Ribac, Davao Regional Major Seminary Professor, Catalunan Grande, Davao City. The choir during the Mass is the heart of Jesus Choral, Carmelite Monastery, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the Banquet of Love. Please stand as we sing the entrance hymn. <clears throat> Oh, 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Persons are meant to be loved and things are meant to be used. We use these created things in order to prove our love of God and love of our neighbor. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amos, the prophet of social justice, castigates those who enrich themselves by exploiting the poor and the lowly, profiting especially from religious days. This crime calls for God's immediate punishment. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask? that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat. We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver, and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Nations is the Lord above the heavens is his glory. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? Up the lowly from the dust, from the dunghill he lifts up the poor to seat them with princes, with the princess of his own people. Apostle Paul encourages the believers to offer prayer to God through Jesus Christ, the mediator between humanity and God. The second reading. A reading from the first late letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, 
for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and man, and the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. It is my wish then that in every place the man should pray, lifting up holy lands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ was rich, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what shall I do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one, to the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another the steward said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred quarts of wheat. The steward said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended that this honest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with this honest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy in dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? 
No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are happy to be gathered together in this Sunday's liturgy in order to be nourished by the Word of God and the Eucharist, the greatest nourishment that we can have. And of course, to listen to our Lord speaking to us through the readings. And in our Sunday liturgy, we are reminded of how determined we are in doing the things concerning our salvation, concerning our souls. That is why, though it is difficult to understand, the parable speaks about commending, commending a steward who is dishonest. You know what? The gospel does not teach us praising dishonesty. It is never the point of the gospel. But what is the point of the gospel is that we are reminded that if these people who are dishonest in, this, in their wealth, in acquiring wealth in order to achieve their goal, then we can learn from this person. And the first lesson that we can learn from the gospel that we have now is that if this steward is dishonest in running the state of his master, because we know if we look at the context of the gospel, during the time there were so many landlords who are absentees. They are living in a foreign land and even in far places and they entrusted their lands, their farms, to a, a particular steward or stewards. And what is the work of the steward? To collect the harvest, of course, the portion of the harvest for the master. That is why the death mentioned in our gospel is actually the rent of the land by the tenants. And we have heard here that the master knew what the steward was doing. He was shrewd. He was dishonest. But how come that still he was praised by, by the master? Because when he was about to be removed from his position, he has this goal. And what is the goal? To be accepted by others. That is why we can learn, the first lesson that we can learn is that if this person is determined enough, ingenious enough, in order to achieve his goal, then for those who are believers of God, we are asked and we are encouraged to do the same, not in a dishonest way, but the way this particular person is so determined to achieve his goal. The cleverness of the person is being praised by the master. It is good to ask ourselves how much time, effort, and even money we spend in order to take care of our souls. If we can do many things, we have so many preoccupations, our work, our family, and other things, other involvements, how much time we give to the Lord? Do we spend time with God every day? Do we spend or give our effort in order to nourish our souls? It's good to ask ourselves, why? Because we have so many things to do in this world. And you know what? The basic thing is sometimes forgotten, if not neglected. The basic thing is that we have to remember that the Lord is so generous with His time. And He is just asking an hour or two a week on Sundays. And sometimes we even sacrifice this one hour or two hours. How much time we give. If we are determined for our salvation, if we are so conscious of the things that we have to do in order to sustain and to protect the salvation, because we are all baptized, we are already saved by the, blood of the, by the blood of Christ, if we are determined, then we have to do all the things, necessary things, in order to achieve it. And that is the point, the first point, that we can learn from the gospel. If the children of this world, as mentioned in our gospel, are so 
crafty in doing their things in order to achieve wealth, then for those who are children of light, we should do our best in order to achieve our goal, and that is salvation. The second point is that we have to remember that things of this world are meant to be used not only for ourselves but for others and for, for the praise of God. And we should not be possessed by these things because the moment that we let ourselves be possessed by these things, then we will forget the giver of this. We will forget the true purpose of God in giving this to us. This person made use of the wealth, although with ulterior motive. But let us remember that he is assured of the welcome, of the acceptance of these debtors of his master. We can make use of these things for others and for God and for eternity. Just like it is mentioned by many of the rabbis, Jewish teachers, that the rich people can help the poor in this world. But they also believe that the poor can help these rich people in the other world. If you are helping these who are needy now, these people will help you in the next life because you are investing something which is eternal. Yes, it is nice to be rich, right? Why? Is it because you want to live a comfortable life? Is it only because of that reason? It is nice to be rich. Why? Because you can help many people. If that is your intention, if that is your intention, remember that treasures are understood to be blessings coming from God. Rich people in the Jewish concept, in the Jewish context are blessed people. They have these riches because they are living, righteous living in front of God. And so they are blessed with all these things. And if you have many possessions, then you have many opportunities to help others, especially those who are poor. And you know what? This is what the prophet Amos in our first reading reminds, or reminds us. Because during that time, during the division of the kingdom, the northern and the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom, Judah, Jerusalem is the center, the northern kingdom, the center is Samaria. During this, this time, the people were experiencing prosperity and peace. And there are those who are rich. But the sad reality was that instead of helping the poor, they are extorting from the poor. They are enriching themselves. Instead of having this opportunity to help those who are destitute, those who are lowly, they even added to their sufferings. And so the prophet Amos who is coming from the southern part, the southern kingdom was called by God in order to prophesy in the northern kingdom. It's not an easy task because you are not a citizen of the northern kingdom, but he was called by God in order to remind these people, yes, you are enjoying many blessings and these blessings are coming from the Lord. And one of the crimes they committed is the crime of injustice. That is why this prophet Amos becomes the prophet of justice. He called these rich people, remember these possessions, these treasures, these blessings that you have are not meant to let people suffer. But these blessings that you have are meant to be used in order to alleviate the sufferings of these people, especially the poor. This is a good reminder to each one of us. That is the second point. That is why we have to remember that in, in a way, we are all stewards. We possess something. If it is not something material, then we have the abilities, we have the capacities, we have the anything that we can offer to others. We can give something to others. We, we, we should make use of all these things. It is not only for them. It is for God. What we do to them, we do to God. That's the second point. Of course, the third point is something which is very practical and observable in our community, even in your work. You are promoted to a higher position, but you, you are not there because of 
just for the sake of being friends with the boss. It is not. But because of your performance. Remember that the gospel reminds us that those who are trustworthy in small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. You can prove that you can be in a better position, a higher position, if you have proven that you can be trusted in these small matters in the lower position. Right? If we look at the second reading, it is just like a recognition that it's not easy. All these things, they are not, these are not easy to deal with. And so we cannot do it by ourselves. And so we need prayer supplications. We pray not just for ourselves, but we pray for, for everyone, for those friends and enemies, for those neighbors who are good to us and those who are shrewd to us. When we pray, we pray for, for everyone, both friends and enemies. And of course, we pray that we will become more and more like that of a good steward who is always mindful of the intention of the master. Because the last point is that we have to remind ourselves that though we are called by God as his friends, remember that we are serving God. And in that sense, our service of God is not a part-time job. Remember that one. It's not a part-time job. Yes, many of us can do many things in one day. I don't know if you have heard this, uh, mananagatero. Mananagatero. Mananagat in the morning, balotero in the evening, <laughs> during night time. So you can do two works at the same time. But our service of God is not like that. It is a full-time job. It is a full-time mission. Because everywhere we go, everything that we do, we are mindful of our master. We bring him, not ourselves. We serve him, not only our, our intention, not only our need. Brothers and sisters, in this liturgy, let us remind ourselves, yes, we have this goal, heaven. We want to be with God. And so we have to learn to do all the things, to exhaust all our energy in order to achieve this. Because always remember that God created us without our cooperation, but God cannot save us without our cooperation. We have to do our part. We have to do our part. We are stewards of the things created, and these things are passing. We look up to that something eternal, and that is our being with God. As servants of God, we have to give our time, our energy, our treasure for the service of God and our neighbors. May God bless us. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our salvation, he came down from heaven. And when the Holy Spirit was in the of the Virgin Mary, and the gay man, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of your life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of your life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Christ.
sa higit na apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father that we may become wise and responsible stewards of what has been entrusted to us. Relying on His grace more than our strength and capacities, we say, Lord, make us your faithful servants. Lord, make us your faithful servants. May those in positions of authority and stewardship, church and political leaders, parents and educators, prove to be good stewards, attentive to the needs of those under their care. We pray. Lord, make us faithful servants. In the face of the widening gap between the rich and the poor, may our government officials, economic leaders, and influential businessmen and businesswomen help to create a social agenda that will alleviate and address the plight of the poor. We pray. Lord, make us your faithful servants. May families be fitting places for the places for the building up of God's kingdom by our respect, love, and concern for one another. We pray. Lord, make us your faithful servants. May the members of the Davao Medical Society, a component society of the Philippine Medical Association, grow in wisdom, grace, and knowledge, especially in the field of alleviating the health of our people. We pray. Lord, make us your May all the activities of the 59th National Medicine Week celebration be successful and in orderly conduct. We pray. Lord, make us your faithful servants. May our people witness to the values of gospel in the past and in the complex world of politics, economics, industry, education, the mass media, science and technology, we pray. Lord, Lord make us your faithful servants. servants. May God give a vision of promise to all who are grieving, depressed, unemployed, sick, or searching, and we may help to give them hope and courage to greet each new day, we pray. Lord, Lord make us your faithful servants. servants. May the members of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources continue to take care of our world entrusted to us by God, we pray. Lord, Lord make us your faithful, faithful servants. servants. For those who are fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, especially the sponsors, benefactors, cooperators of the TV mass production, that God may welcome them in heaven. We pray. Lord, Lord make us your faithful, faithful servants. servants. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our personal and family's intentions. God, our Father, make us aware of your many gifts. Help us to be thankful and to share willingly what we have. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. the founts of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, George's Auxiliary, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace, peace, peace. peace, peace, peace. See you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The daughters of St. Paul would like to offer their new book entitled, Pray With Me. This contains seven simple ways to pray with children. This is highly recommended for parent, grandparent, son or daughter, looking to grow closer to God and their loved ones. This is available at the Daughters of St. Paul bookstore located at Bolton Street, Davao City. This is only 165 pesos. Thank you and have a blessed day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.